Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. I met my ex when we were both attending college. I was 24 and she was 22. I had never really dated much before her. I had just gotten out of a toxic, year-long relationship that didn't work out, but we ended things amicably. The other girl was seriously depressed. I loved her, but she was so overwhelmingly depressed that I couldn't do anything to help. I consider myself an empath, and her depression would seep into me. So, I broke it off. My ex was the one who sort of approached me, as we were both living in the same apartment complex. I had gone out of my way to help her a few times, she asked for a ride, and that was what sparked the friendship that eventually became a relationship. I would spend hours with her, whether she was at home or closing up at the sandwich store where she worked. She was taking time off from school due to depression and a failed engagement from a year or so ago. Though, as far as I know, she never finished school and transferred twice to other universities. We partially bonded over her story about being betrayed and cheated on by her ex, though I now question how much of that story was true. We became inseparable. She introduced me to her parents only after two months of friends with benefits. After a few months, I wanted her to be my girlfriend since I simply had no interest in other girls aside from her. She declined, saying she wasn't ready because of her past engagement. This should have been my first red flag, but, like the idiot I was, I gave her a pass. We continued dating exclusively. She didn't date anyone else, and neither did I. A month later, I brought up our status again because, if we were exclusive anyway, why not just admit what we were? She continued to fight it. There were times during our relationship when things seemed perfect. She seemed to like everything I liked, we had similar goals, and we just seemed like a perfect match. But sometimes, I would notice backhanded remarks about me. She would sometimes compare me to her different exes. We would sometimes fight over small things, and I would try to de-escalate the situation, but she wouldn't have it. She would run out of my apartment, and at times, I would chase after her. She would become angry when I did that, saying I should give her space. So, the next time she did that, I wouldn't chase after her, and then she would accuse me of not caring about her. She also began to gaslight me about certain things I remembered her saying, though, at the time, I didn't know what gaslighting was. But like a sucker in love, I went along with it. Many of my friends would remark to me, when I spoke about her, that I could do better, that she didn't treat me right, but I just brushed it off. People, listen to your friends, they're usually looking out for you. After dating for a year, I would still bring up becoming official boyfriendy girlfriend, but she was still resistant. She would still say she wasn't ready, but that I was the best guy she had ever dated. All of her friends knew we were dating, but to be honest, I didn't like them. She would invite me to hang out with them, but they were very cliquish, and I'm not like that. Also, they had a cat, and I'm allergic, so I would use that as an excuse. As time went on, we would go on dates, she would call me every night, and we would stay on the phone all night until one of us woke up the next day. She said that, due to her depression, I was comforting and helped her sleep. We continued to have problems, and at times she would even get physical. She slapped me hard on two occasions. Both times were not because we were fighting, but because she thought it would be funny. Each time, I told her that was disrespectful and that, since I would never do that to her, I expected the same in return. During one of our fights, she once stated, my roommate knows all the guys who would be willing to be non-committal make-out partners in the complex, so I don't really need you. Finally, after a little over a year of dating, she gave in and decided to be boyfriend-girlfriend, but I noticed that she seemed to keep it a secret from everyone except her family. I thought it was weird, but seeing as I had gotten what I wanted, I paid no attention to it. I'm going to add this here and say there were times I wasn't a perfect significant other. I also deal with depression, and the stress of work, school, family, and her became too much at times. I lashed out but never hurt her. I would point out the things she had done that were hurtful to me. We broke up several times. 
Sometimes I would break up with her, and sometimes she would break up with me. But each time, one of us would relent, and we'd come back to each other. One time, I was a bit manipulative and self-harmed to show her how much I was hurting. She had also self-harmed and expressed being suicidal while we were dating, and to be totally honest, I got the idea from her. I was truly in love with her. She told me she felt the same way. We discussed marriage, children, where we would live, and more. During this time, she moved twice, first to an apartment down the street and then to her parents' house about an hour north. When she lived in the apartment down the street, she threw a party. When it was over, none of her friends stayed to help clean, just me. She told me this was proof I'd be a good husband. After her move to her parents' place, I would visit her almost weekly. But I began to notice a bit of distance at times. She was replying slower and slower to my texts and calls. Yet if she called or texted me, she expected a quick reply. Whenever she needed me, I would come to her, even at 1 a.m. when I had work and school the next day. After a couple of months, I began to suggest getting engaged, but then she started doing the same thing she had done with becoming boyfriend or girlfriend. She would use her depression from her past relationship as an excuse. Then she asked if we could go back to casually dating. This was the dumbest thing I had ever done. I agreed, thinking it would show her that I was the right guy for her. Over the next few months, she would go on dates, but she would tell me about them and say how much better I was than those guys. I continued not to date because I was a hopeless romantic in love with her. I told her that if she found someone she wanted to pursue, I would end our relationship so she could go after him. But after talking to my friends and family, I had a realization, why was I doing all this for her when she wasn't even my girlfriend anymore? So I told her, and she agreed that any physical relationship would end until we got back to being exclusive. Except, it didn't. We would go on dates, and she would guilt trip and pressure me, and I would give in. Immediately afterward, she would become angry, saying, why couldn't you resist? Why didn't you stop me? She became very hurtful in her words. The worst was when she told me that if she got pregnant, she would never tell me and that only she would decide what to do. That hurt so much, as I've always wanted to be a father and would never leave my children. But we would simply fight and then we'd end up making up. During all of this, we would continue to talk about a future together. She would see a mixed baby, I'm Latino and she was white, and say how she saw the cutest baby that could have been ours. Whenever she felt depressed, she would call me or ask, would you still marry me, and I would respond, of course I would. I love you. It wasn't until Christmas, while I was in Florida visiting my brother, that I began to suspect something was up. I'd text her, but she wouldn't respond. I'd call her to do our usual phone call at night, but she wouldn't answer. One time she did call, asking if I had a certain movie on DVD. When I asked why, she said she wanted to watch it with her family, but I could sense something was off. When I returned from vacation and started a new semester, she came to visit me, sort of. She was at my university for some reason, lost her Fitbit, and called me for help. I came over, and we spent some time together, but I could feel something was different. Then, she told me she wanted me to visit her at her parents' house in two days because she had something important to talk about. Right then, I knew what was coming. I talked to some friends and prepared myself for the worst. When I arrived at her parents' house, it was late, she had asked me to come at 10 p.m. She got into my car, and we talked for about 30 minutes to an hour. She told me she no longer wanted to date me. I agreed, telling her I had felt her becoming distant. I asked if it was someone else, but she denied it, saying she just didn't think we were right for each other anymore. Then she started saying other things. She told me she'd never considered me husband material, never saw us getting married or having kids, and that she'd known this from the beginning. She even said that part of her reason for not wanting to be with me was that our kids wouldn't look like her since she was white and I was Latino. This is especially ironic now, considering she likes to say how progressive and non-racist she is, right? This shocked me. I thought back to all the plans we'd made, all the time she'd asked if I would marry her, 
and all the time she'd talked about our future children. That part hurt the most. I told her I loved her, but I agreed we were done. We decided on no contact. She said she would block me on Facebook because she knew I wouldn't be able to keep her blocked if I tried. I said, fine. We didn't end up blocking each other's phone numbers, just in case there was an emergency, since I had no family in the state. As I drove away, I felt sad, but also felt as if a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. The next month was an uphill battle. I'd feel fine during the day but become depressed at night. I realized she had made me codependent on her, I had gotten used to our nightly phone calls, and without them, I felt very alone. There were many nights when I'd be on the floor in my room, struggling with a deep sadness. But I threw myself into work, school, and spending time with friends. About a month later, I got an early morning call from her. I answered, thinking it was an emergency. It wasn't. It seemed like she'd accidentally called me, but that didn't make sense, we hadn't spoken in a month. What were the odds of her accidentally calling me? I could hear bits and pieces of a conversation in the background. I heard her voice and a man's voice I didn't recognize. They were talking about snow, and I swear I heard my name mentioned before the call abruptly ended. I know I shouldn't have, but I reached out to some mutual friends and learned she had started dating someone. Eventually, I messaged her, I know I shouldn't have, to check if she was okay. It took a few days for her to reply, and she said she'd actually wanted to talk to me, claiming the call was an accident, but that she missed my friendship. For a few minutes, it felt like old times. She then mentioned she'd started seeing someone. I told her I'd heard and, when she asked how, I explained that friends had told me. I'd already seen a picture of him, so when she started talking about his weird hair, I responded, yeah, it is a bit. That's when things got awkward. She said she was talking about his hair from years ago and started questioning how I'd know what it looked like back then. I quickly corrected myself, saying I thought she meant now. Then she mentioned she'd been getting random friend requests on Facebook and asked if it was me. It wasn't. We ended the conversation shortly after, but the more I thought about it, the more uneasy I felt. Part of me was happy for her, but another part realized I didn't want to keep talking to her. The next day, I messaged her and said, while it was nice talking like we used to, I think it's best if we keep not speaking. She agreed, and I blocked her number. About a week later, while on campus, I noticed a voicemail from her, even though my phone hadn't rung. In the message, she asked if I was home because she'd stopped by to drop some things off. It bothered me because I didn't feel like there was anything important enough to return, and it annoyed me that she left them on my doorstep since no one was home. At this point, I felt frustrated. I had clearly asked for no contact. So, I decided to write her an email. I poured my heart into it, telling her I had loved her deeply but felt hurt and mistreated by her lies and behavior. I thanked her parents for always being kind to me, they had often told me what an amazing boyfriend I was. Then I made it clear I wanted no contact of any kind. I told her she was now blocked on my phone, and though we only lived an hour apart, we might cross paths due to mutual friends. I ended with this, the way you treat me is how I'll treat you if we see each other. If you treat me like a friend, I'll treat you like a friend. If you treat me like an enemy, I'll treat you like an enemy. And if you act like I don't exist, I'll do the same. I sent the email and didn't expect to ever hear back from her. Boy, was I wrong. A few days later, I got a reply, not from her, but from her dad. Now, her dad is an ex-marine and a lawyer, and in his email, he demanded I leave his daughter alone. He accused me of stalking her, which baffled me. I lived an hour away, completely occupied with school, work, and my own friends. He claimed I was creating fake Facebook accounts to cyberstalk her? I hadn't created any fake accounts, I'd only checked her profile from a friend's account a couple of times. Who hasn't done that? He even highlighted the line from my email about treating her the way she treats me, saying, I consider this a threat. He warned me to leave her alone or he'd file for a restraining order. I was stunned. 
Her dad and I had always been on good terms, so reading his message felt surreal. I spoke to a few friends, and since I'd studied some law in college, I knew how to respond. I emailed him back, explaining that I had zero interest in contacting his daughter. In fact, she was the one who had reinitiated contact and had even shown up at my house a week ago without my knowledge. I pointed out that if I were a stalker, she wouldn't have felt comfortable doing that. I also told him that we both knew his accusations were unfounded, and no judge would grant a restraining order based on them. I ended by saying that I wouldn't contact him or his daughter again, as long as they extended the same courtesy to me. But I couldn't help but wonder, what stories had she been telling people about me? What version of events was she spinning? I shared everything with my friends, and they were just as shocked. They told me I'd dodged a bullet, or maybe even a nuke, and that I should be grateful. I thought that would be the end of it. But like I said, this is a cheating story, and a long one at that. We had broken up in January, and just after the first week of April, a friend messaged me at work, telling me my ex had just gotten engaged. I was floored. It had only been three months. For someone who constantly complained about how hard relationships were because of her cheating, abusive ex fiance this didn't add up. But then my friend mentioned a comment on her engagement post that made everything click. Someone had congratulated her and said they were thrilled to have helped them get together back in November. November? When we were still together? Sure, we weren't exclusive yet, but I'd given her multiple chances to be honest with me about seeing someone else, and she'd lied every time. To me, that was cheating. I was livid. Suddenly, everything made sense, the distance at Christmas, the movie she didn't want to watch with me. She'd been seeing him the whole time. It hurt, but I got on with my life. I was still struggling with depression and trust issues, though, and I talked to people about it, friends, people from church. The more I shared, the more I learned about her. People who knew her, but didn't know we'd dated, opened up, saying things like, yeah, that girl's got issues. They shared details I probably wasn't supposed to hear, but it helped. I found out the nasty things she'd said about others and started to realize she never really cared about me. She just wanted someone to care for her until someone better came along. I understood, finally, that I'd fallen in love with who she pretended to be, not who she was. She must have heard I was a nice guy and decided I was empathetic enough to manipulate. She'd just mirrored my personality back at me, making me think I was with someone like myself. But really, I'd been dating a narcissist. Understanding this taught me a lot about myself. I realized I care too much, love too deeply, and that I need to be careful about who I give my heart to. Lesson learned. Half a year passed. I hadn't run into her, though I heard she'd moved back to my city with her husband, so much for me being the stalker. A few friends ran into her, though, and one even embarrassed her with a suggestive joke about something she'd done. Shout out to Danny Boy, brothers for life. Then I got invited to a friend's wedding. I couldn't make the ceremony, but I went to the reception. I'd just wrapped up a funny speech, roasting my friend for his ridiculous laugh, when a mutual friend entered the room, with my ex and her husband walking in right behind her. I saw her, and we locked eyes. In that instant, she froze, then pushed her husband back into the hallway and followed him out of sight. Surprised, I stepped outside to collect myself. I was fine, really, but the shock of seeing her after everything took me off guard. A few minutes later, I went back in, but she and her husband never re-entered. I asked my friend if he'd invited her, and he admitted he had, though he hadn't thought to warn me. He wasn't a close friend, more of a mutual friend through one of my best friends. A bit later, the bride and groom were ready for their first dance, so we all cleared chairs from the dance floor. As I was moving one, my ex came through a door nearby. She saw me right next to her, froze again, and immediately ran to the other side of the room, her husband following behind. We avoided each other for the rest of the night, only exchanging a few glances. But at that moment, I felt whole again. All those months, I'd felt broken, like something essential was missing. But seeing her reaction, how ashamed she seemed to be, restored me. 
For the first time since the breakup, I felt genuinely happy. Even though she was married and I was single, I realized I'd won the breakup. She was too ashamed to even look at me while I had no such issue. I had a clear conscience. And now, here I am, over four years later, writing this. I'm still single, but I'm happy. And Maddie, if you ever end up reading this, screw you. I finished university, and you're just a housewife now. For all that talk about changing the world, the only things you'll be changing are dirty diapers. You're a liar, a cheat, and nothing more. Well, folks, that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.